In recent weeks, I've been sending out video messages to the Diocese of Leicester. Mostly these have taken the form of interviews with different people from uh, churches all across the diocese, people who can bring a slightly different perspective on all that we're experiencing at this time. But I'm interrupting that series to send a very personal message again on this Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is one of the great celebrations of the church. Yet, once again, we're having to mark this festival at a time when many in our society are grieving and are suffering and are anxious. How then do we hold together both the note of celebration with that note of lament and grief? That's part of what we're called to do at this time, but it is very difficult. The stories in the Bible about Pentecost, particularly that in the book of Acts, the story of the Holy Spirit coming on the first Christian disciples, is a story of translation. So yes, as those first disciples stand up to speak about Jesus, suddenly they're able to speak in languages of all different nations. People from many different parts of the world understand what they're saying in their own language. But that work of translation then is carried on through the Bible in other ways as well. Uh, we're told that the Holy Spirit is the way that God's love is translated into our hearts so that we have a deep inner assurance of God's love for us. And then the other way around as well, our unspoken prayers, those times when we just can't find the words, it is the Holy Spirit who reads the sighs in our hearts, our deepest longings, and translates them to God the Father. So in all sorts of different ways, the Holy Spirit can be described as the translator. And I wonder at this moment in time for the church, as so much around us is changing, I wonder how we are being called to translate the good news of Jesus Christ into this new context. Part of that, of course, is about what we are already doing in so many ways, the practical acts of care for people who are in need in, th in this time. That is how God's love is translated into concrete action, so to speak, that really speaks to people in their differing circumstances. But even more than that, I'm beginning to sense that God is calling on us to translate our whole life together as church into a new expression. Again, it's part of what we've already been exploring in terms of fresh expressions of church, new ways of being church that connect with people who would not and otherwise connect with traditional church. But in our very new context in society where so many are searching spiritually, looking for answers to deep questions, wondering about the future of our society. I think maybe God is calling on us to translate the life of the church into very different forms, such that people can themselves know the good news of Jesus Christ and experience God's love personally. That's no easy task. And that's why we need to go on praying for the gift of God's Holy Spirit to enable us to do that work of translation. So my thanks for all that you are already doing, particularly in a time of such challenge, but also my hope that you will journey with me as we start to explore what the church will need to look like in the future and how God is translating us into a new context. There are no easy answers to that, but I hope that together in conversation in the coming weeks and months, we can start to explore what that will look like. Please be assured of my prayers for each and every church community right across the Diocese of Leicester, and my thanks for all that you're doing.